Hey guys, welcome back. In my last video, I talked about how how to put together one of these chassis kits. They're very easy to get online. Cost about hundred dollars. I spent some time in the shed this weekend because having a chassis tank sitting on the shelf looks great. But as a big kid, I just want to drive it, right? You know, we all just want to have a bit of fun. So I put together some very basic components based on what I had laying around in my toolbox and yeah I'm, I'm very impressed this is a great little chassis a lot of them out there are pretty cheap and look very much like a toy whereas this one feels real real solid yeah so in this video I'll show you how I put this together I think the components were around $30 Australian and I've got that running from an Xbox controller, one of the newer Bluetooth controllers, very easy to pair. I suppose we better get into it, otherwise I'm going to spend an hour just sitting here driving around. Okay, well I managed to clean up just enough space on my messy workbench to take this video. A messy shed is a good shed, as they say. Um, Anyway, you're probably wondering why there's MDF on here, and that is because I didn't have enough bolts and standoffs to mount these boards directly onto the chassis. So with the few bolts I did have, I used that to bolt in the MDF, and then I've got plenty of screws, so I can use those to screw these boards in. And that works pretty well, as I'm learning and moving things around and prototyping, you know, just to take them off and shift them around, so that's fine. And most blokes, like me, have probably got a box of scrap wood in their shed, and it really does feel like an achievement when you can rummage in there and dig out a piece of wood and say, yes, it has a use. Anyway, let's have a look at this side of the board first. So what we have here, this is the brains of the unit. This is the ESP32. It's a bit like an Arduino, but cheaper and probably better spec. They are, they are pretty, pretty good. They're under $10 on AliExpress. That is powered via a USB cable to here. This is a 18650 battery shield. This is a two battery, but you can get them in singles, doubles, or fours. And it's just a convenient way of getting a USB output to, to power your, your, your microcontrollers. There are some three volts and five volt um, points down the side. So if you did want to sort of solder on anything directly, then, then you can do that. But anyway, that's powering the microcontroller. Um, looking at the back, so for the motor drivers, now, I'm learning electronics as I go, and one of the things I learned is that you can't power the motors directly from your ESP32. And the reason is because the, the motors will just draw too much current, and what will happen is you'll end up just frying your ESP32. So what you have to do is you have to separate this, this concern, and you have to delegate the driving of the motors to a separate board. And this red board here, it's a very common board, very cheap, again, under $5. It's the L298N, and it allowed you to drive two different motors. So if we jump to the back, this is the battery pack for the motors. Now over on this side, this is all five volts, but the motors are 12 volt DC, so I can't use the five volts to power the motors. So what I have here is just a battery holder, and there's eight AA Duracells in there in series. And that combined will give you your 12 volts, which is enough for the motors. So coming out of here, we go through a switch, just because it's easier to turn that on and off than it is to try and get this plug. They're very stiff, these plugs, for some reason. But anyway, you've got the 12 volts going in here. And then these two on the side. So this one is the, um, is the two leads for the right motor. And this one is the two leads for the left motor. And then all these headers down here, all these jumper leads, I should say, that go back to the ESP32, that's what allows it to control the signals to the motor. So these, these wires here will tell the motors to be either on or off, and then it will control the direction too. So very, very simple. It doesn't really cost much, probably under 
twenty dollars maybe, maybe under thirty dollars Australian. And it's pretty simple to get going. So I just plug this in. And there's an LED on here. So when you press the reset button, you'll see that turn on. So that means the ESP is turned on. And then for the batteries, I turn that on. You can see there's a red light on there, which tells me that they're ready. And then I just turn on the controller. Now the code on the ESP32 will automatically pair with the control pad. So once that light is, is, is solid, you're good to go. Simple as that. I would just mention that with the controllers, you have to have the newer versions of the Xbox controllers because they're Bluetooth and the SP32 is Bluetooth as well. I have one of the original Xbox Ones, probably it must be nearly 10 years old now, and you can't use those original controllers because they're not Bluetooth, they're some proprietary protocol, so they, they won't pair with the ESP32. So I had to go out and buy, buy a new one, but that's fine. And to turn it off, all I do is I just disconnect this, and then just turn that off. So there we have it. Okay, so I'm at the computer. Let's have a look at the code and what you need to do for that. So jumping across to Arduino IDE. So there's a few setup things that you have to do first. So if you go to Arduino and then settings, you'll see this button down here for your board managers. And you will need to add in these two boards here at the bottom. Don't worry about trying to copy them from the video. I will paste all this down below to save you trying to type that. But anyway, you need to add those two. When you've done that, you can then click on board managers and search for ESP32 BluePad. BluePad is the library that we use to connect the ESP32 to a Bluetooth controller. Now, BluePad will support a range of different Bluetooth controllers. So if you've got a PS4 controller, for example, that, that should work fine. Um, but yeah, go ahead and install that. The ESP32 BluePad by Ricardo Quesada, if I pronounce that right. Very kind of him to make that. Makes our life so much easier. When you've done that, if you go to Tools and then down to Board, you should see another option down here for ESP32 BluePad. Normally I would use this one, but this one will be there now. So then just go through and find your board. Mine is a Wemos Login32, so just hit that. And it will do the same as what you would normally do when you deploy, except this time it will have all the BluePad libraries that allow you to, to connect. So looking at the code, I'm not going to go through everything because uh, it'd just be boring, wouldn't it? And most people have probably already scrolled on. I, I do hope someone is still listening. <laughs> anyway, I will link this code down below as well. So let's just go through some of the some of the important things. So up here is all your pins. So set those to relevant Jupyter pins for your board. You may have different pin layout to me. With Arduino, you've got your two main functions. So in your setup, this is just initializing your, your pin modes and so on. Nothing too exciting in there. Um, now that's the loop that we're interested in. So the loop will just run forever until you turn it off. And what it's doing there is it's looking every iteration to see what the values of the controllers are, of the, the joysticks, sorry. So you can see I'm using the axis Y and the axis RY, which is the right stick. So these are your two sticks going up and down. I'm not interested in going sideways on the sticks. I'm literally just going up and down like a tank control with levers. So we have to do a bit of mapping. So with the controllers, there's a range that the stick will be in. Um, so that'll be from like minus 512 to positive 512 depending on where your stick is. If it's in the middle, then it will be zero. Um, same for the other stick. Um, but you have to convert that to a different value for the motor speed. So the motor speed, again, it uses a range. So it will use positive 255 to negative 255. And that's just basically your directions. So we do a bit of mapping there to map from the controller to that. Um, I have added in some logging here just because that was useful when I was when I was starting this. And you can see from down below, you can see I'm sort of moving the stick around here. You can see the left stick is changing and then the right stick here as well. And then lastly, 
once you've got the values, you just pass that to the drive motor, and then the drive motor will send the signals to those GPIO pins to drive the motors. Um, you'll notice that it won't do it if the power is is too too low, and that's just because you might have a little bit of stick drift, so you don't want the stick to be slightly off, and then your your tank will just drive, you know. We at least give it some sensitivity there. And that's pretty much it. You just hit the button, flash it to your USB 32, and off you go. So there we have it. I know it's not particularly complex, but to me, as a beginner, this was a great step in my journey. I'm not sure what I'll do next. I'd like to do something about the power supply at the back. I'm not a big fan of using all these AA batteries, because it's just going to burn through them so quick. I don't know if I'll go to LiPo straight away, because here in Australia, when you price in the cost of a LiPo charger and a couple of batteries, you're pushing $300 already. I don't know why it's so expensive in Australia. Um, so I need to try and find another 12 volt power supply. I don't want to use a car battery because it will be way too heavy. Um, so I need to have a think about that. Um, another thing, I'd like to play around with the PixHawk controllers so I can do some autonomous missions using GPS and stuff like that. But I think that might be jumping the gun a bit too much. And again, that would need a beefy power supply to do that. So what I may do is for the next step is to swap the ESP32 out for a Raspberry Pi. And I have one of those pan and tilt servo kits. So I might stick that on the front of the camera and then try and do some, some camera streaming back to a ground station perhaps. I did another video on computer vision where I can do object detection. So maybe I'll have a play around with that and see if I can get it to maybe detect me as a person and then follow me. For example, I could have an ultrasonic sensor on the front so it can, can detect the, the depth. So I might do that to start with. Um, yeah, I'm not sure yet. Um, it's all part of the journey, I guess. If you've got any comments or suggestions or anything like that, um, please do put them down below. I'd, I'd love to hear them. Um, yeah, this is a great little hobby, so look forward to the next one. I'm going to go and burn these, burn these batteries out now and drive it around the shed. Thanks all.